it's all right to praise him. When it didn't look like it was going to turn out good, he said a rainbow. When you look like you're about to run out of gas in your car, he put a rainbow. When, when, when the doctor said you wasn't going to see another three months, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He'll put a rainbow. When you felt like you couldn't do another day, he'll put a rainbow. And anywhere there's a rainbow, the sun is in the sky. We give God the glory. We thank God for all that is done. And what better way to start this month's series than about preaching about being thankful. Some of us can't wait for Thanksgiving to get here. But you ought to give God thanks right now because you don't know whether you're going to have ham or turkey on the table. Thank, thank him for the turkey from last year. Come on, somebody. We got something to thank God for. We thank the Lord, amen, for his unadulterated gospel. We thank the Lord for just the ability to preach the gospel. And we just thank the Lord for your ability to hear what thus saith the Lord. Coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. What better way to tell the Lord thank you, thank you Jesus. than to hear how we're supposed to treat one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Stevenson, yes. for reading it in, in its entirety. Yes. Verses 1 through 8. But I'm only going to look at verse 8 this morning. All right. Verse 8 in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 reads like this. A time to love and a time to hate. I'm going to stop right there. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, it's me again. Standing in the need of prayer. Yes, Lord, touch us, Jesus. Lord, the enemy was on the attack this morning. Jesus. But God, you said we ought to raise up a standard. Yes, Lord. And God, we waive the standard right now. Right now, Lord. And that standard is the blood-stained banner. Yes, yes. God, we thank you for the blood-stained banner. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And as we take time out on this communion Sunday. Yes. We want to wave that banner as high as we can. Yes. Because we know if it had not been for you on our side, yes. we don't know where we would be. So, God, we ask that you would allow your word to prick every heart Jesus. that is in the sanctuary this morning. Right. And, God, for everyone that will leave here, they leave here better than when they came. Yes, God, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. And the people of God said amen. 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 I want to use this morning as I can as a subject. Be thankful for the time that you have. All right. Be thankful for the time that you have. Like me, church, I was wrestling with the need for some rest and relaxation. I thank the Lord for the rest and relaxation. That me and Lady Smith was able to enjoy. All right. But this morning I woke up realizing that God is still in the blessing business. Yes. As it relates to rest and relaxation. All right. Because when you woke up this morning. Yes. You had an extra hour of sleep. Y'all right. sure don't want to hear what I'm saying. Yes, we did. God stopped time. In the United States of America. All right. So that we could get an extra hour of sleep. Right. One day a year. All right. Somebody ought to tell the Lord thank you. Thank you Jesus. God said take the clock and move it back. One hour. So that you can stay in your warm cozy bed. Yes. Just a few more extra minutes. Right. Boy I wish I had a church this morning. Right. 
I thank the Lord for daylight savings time. All right. Me too. Because we ask the Lord to give us some rest and relaxation, he pushed the clock back on our behalf. All right. And because we got an extra hour of sleep on Sunday morning, we should have been ready to worship God on time. All right. Because the Lord gave you an hour you didn't deserve. All right, you should have kicked the doors open to yeah. give God some praise. Yeah. Right. But because we're not thankful for what God does for us, we went right back to the same mind we had last Sunday. We showed up late even though he gave us an extra hour. All right, Pastor. All right. All right. All right. I can't get no help this morning. You ask him to give you some help, and the best thing you can do is to show up late for worship. On the one Sunday, you get an extra hour than everybody else in the world. Y'all don't want to help me say nothing this morning. But despite his unmerited favor, sometimes we don't tell the Lord thank you for even the smallest things he gives to us. But I've never seen a boss move the time back. I've never seen the newsman move the time back. I've never seen a pastor or bishop move the time back. But God said you can stay in your bed one more hour and what do we do? We still show up late. I know it's getting a little thick this morning. Time is a precious commodity. Time is like money. You can save it. You can waste it. You can give it to people who don't need it and give it to folk who don't appreciate it. Do I have a witness this morning? There are some who say in the world, time waits for no man. There are some in the world that says time is money. All right. Comfort will dictate how we appreciate the time that God gives us. Right. If we're comfortable in our beds, mm -hmm. we will fool ourselves to believe we got 15 extra minutes. All right. When in all actuality, it's the same 15 minutes I'm just staying in the bed. Right. Boy, y'all don't want to help me this morning. Right. We, we are covetous right. with something that we have no control over. Right. And that thing is time. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody to say time. time. Our approach to time can reveal either our appreciation for the time that we have or the arrogance and slowfulness of the time that we were offered. Right. We are so organized at times that we will push God out of the service. Wow. We want everything to fall on a certain timeline, right. even at the behest of worship, because we don't want to be late. All right. But there are some of us who will show up late Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and expect people to wait for us before the service falls. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Not realizing that this the opportunity to come to church on Sunday right. is something we ought to thank God for. Hallelujah. Amen. So somebody said, be thankful be of the time, of the time. That, you have. that you have. Because time is a promise to anybody. All right. Time is given to us not because we earned it, but because the God we serve is merciful to allow us to share that time with Him. Amen. 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 But pastor, you're stepping on my toes. Well, you should have saw me when I stepped on my own toes. Because sometimes you have to step on your own toes. See, there's evidence of how we in the body of Christ treat God's time. There is observation that recognizes and maybe suggests that we don't appreciate the little bit of time that God has given us. Why do I say that? Because some of us treat man's time 
more important than God. All right, say so, Pastor. What are you Amen. talking about, preacher? Amen. Get by a plane ticket. You will be on time. <laughs> you will be on time. If that plane is leaving at 6.05 in the morning, right. you, will be there. you better be there at 4.05 in All the morning. Right. And you better have your bag that fits in the carry-on. That's right. Yeah. And you better be sitting there when they call the boarding pass at 30 minutes before the flight takes off. Right. 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 I learned that. I know what I'm talking about. I just learned that. Yeah. Yeah. I just learned that. <laughs> and wait for this thing called Black Friday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You will get up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Drive to Raleigh, North Carolina to stand in line at 4 o'clock in the morning to wait for the store to open up at 6 o'clock in the morning to buy a television that's going to be on sale two weeks from now. And, and then don't be late to the man's job. If you have to get on that bus, there. You'll wake up at 3.30 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning. 4 in the morning. Yeah. Get that big yellow bus. 16. Pick up them hard-headed kids. 16. And you better not be five minutes late. 16. 16 somebody said, be thankful Amen. for the time that you have. Amen. There's a man known for his wisdom. Amen. This man was the son of a king named David. Who better to talk about the blessings of God than the wise King Solomon? Chapter 1 describes the book of Ecclesiastes as the word of the preacher. It is also called in the Hebrew the key holy. The key holy is translated into the Greek as Ecclesiastes. In other words, Solomon was the preacher of wisdom to the Israelites in the early church. Yes. Do I have a wisdom this yes. morning? Yes. Though this son of God, the son of King David, would build a mighty temple and call for the church and the Israelites to serve God with all of their hearts, he was cut down by sin. Y'all uh -huh. y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. He was a mighty and wise king. Yes, but 1 Kings 11 and 4 tells us that when Solomon was old, his wives turned him to idol gods. All right. It did not matter how wise Solomon was, but give him enough time. Yes. 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 And he would turn from the God that rained down fire in the temple. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But if you give people too much time, well, I don't care how wise you are, you can still sin against God. And I stop by to tell somebody this morning that it does not matter how long you've been in the church. You need to thank God that he hasn't taken you out of the church. But while you are still in the church, mother, you ought to give God praise for the time that he gave you. Because time is not given to anybody. But it is given because he is still a good God. He has given us time because he is a merciful God. Do I have a witness? We have time on this earth because God has allowed it to be so. Somebody say it. I'm going to work with a little bit of voice that I have. But King Solomon's wisdom should not be discounted because he teaches us a valuable lesson about the time God gives us on this earth. Right. King Solomon seems to assess his life in retrospect and reminds us that our flesh, our assignment, our good days, our bad days, yeah. our happiness, our yeah. sadness, right. our prosperity, right. and our brokenness all has a time limit. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care how bad things is in your life, it has a time limit. I don't care how happy you are in the world, it has a time limit. Tell somebody said, be thankful, be thankful for the time, for the time 
that you have. That you have. But Solomon says something in verse 9 that is so powerful. He gives us throughout the first eight verses a paradigm. Uh -huh. He shows us the good yes, and the bad. Uh -huh. He shows us the highs and the, and the lows. Yes. He shows us the prosperity yeah, right. and the poverty. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yes. He gives us those paradigms so that we can understand that no matter the height or the low, no matter the left or the right, it's only for a matter of time. Do I have a witness? Yes. But I believe as we get ready to see what the text says, verse 8 is a powerful verse because it gives us two things to look at. Let me tell you what it says in verse 8. Verse 8, the first part says, a time to love and a time to hate. Let me stop right there. Can I ask y'all this question? Are you loving the right things? Are you loving the right things? King Solomon provides what I like to call a paradox spectrum. It is a spectrum that puts a book in on one part of love and the other part on hate. Do I have a witness? Verse 9 has been the subject of a lot of debate in the church. I can understand God telling us that we should love everybody. I understand that the Bible declares that if a man does not have love, he does not know God because God is y'all know the word of prayer. But why, church, why would God place a time limit on love? He said there's a time to love. So that lets me know that God wants us to love, but there is a certain amount of time. Come on, somebody. That we have to love one another. Furthermore, if we are called to love, why has God given us the liberty to choose hate over love? I need you to think about that. He gave us a choice to either love or hate. But whichever choice we have, church, we only have a certain amount of time. And I need the church of today to understand that we need to choose to love instead of waste our time on hate. It makes me sad to know that people will walk in the house of God. Get this. Looking for a reason not to speak to somebody. We will look for a reason to remember when somebody, mother, hurt our feelings in 1987. You was in high school in 1987. You got children in 2019. And you got people in your family you won't even talk to. Tell somebody say, be thankful, be thankful for the time that you have. This may seem like a problem for people to think about why God would allow us to hate something with a little bit of time that we have. But I would propose to you, church, that you can choose love and not put your time in hating anybody. Therefore, the church was not called to hate anybody. But the church was called to love everybody despite their situation. Do I have a witness? We cannot waste time looking for a reason to hate somebody. But the thing that God calls us to hate has to be done at a certain time. Well, what you talking about, preacher? I'm going to get to the hate part. But let's work on the love part first. Y'all don't want to hear me. If we will focus on the love part, man. We can have more love in our families. If we focus on the love part, we will have more love in the church. If we focus on the love part, dear, we will have more love in our relationship. So I ask you this question. What have you chose to love in 2019? Stop loving your money. Stop loving your house. Stop loving your closet. Stop loving your car. And start loving the one that God told you to love. Right. 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 Be thankful. Right. 
Be thankful for the time that you have. But, 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 Pastor, you left something out. You said there's a time to love, but then you said there's a time to hate. There's a, a time to hate. Why would God make time for us to hate? But can I give this to you? You need to make sure you're hating the right thing. Make sure you are hating the right thing. Job tells us in chapter 14, Rev, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So if we only have a few days on this earth, why would God give us the time to use that time to hate something? Shouldn't we be loving everybody? Shouldn't we be loving everything? Well, we can love everybody, but we ain't got to love everything. That's right. That's right. That's right. Can I propose to you, Brother Donald, there's some stuff we need to hate. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. There's some stuff, Sister Spicer, we need to hate. What are you talking about, preacher? We need to hate sin. We need to hate sin. We can love the sinner. You didn't that. I can love you, but I don't like the stuff that you do. Especially if the stuff you're doing is called sin. Do I have a witness? Sin tempts us to take our eyes off God and focus on the things that the enemy wants to use to kill us. Do I have a witness? Proverbs tells us that there's seven things that God hates. Isn't that the word? God said there's seven things that he hates. What are you talking about, preacher? The first thing he hates is a proud look. God hates a proud look. What is a proud look, preacher? When you come into church thinking it's all about you. Because he's a jealous God. And he's not sharing his glory with somebody who just bought a suit from City Trails. Boy, y'all got quiet. I ain't trying to talk down on City Trails. You look cute with your City Trails. But you don't come into church thinking your City Trails is going to take time away from God. He hates a proud look. But you know what else God hates? He hates a lying tongue. Mother Vivian, he hates a lying tongue. He hates the tongue that comes in the body of Christ mispronouncing the truth in order to get somebody to follow. You purposely take things and change it because you know it's going to get you some attention. But God says he hates a lying tongue, especially a tongue that lies to cover itself. That's why you don't have no friends today. See, see, that's why I don't trust nobody. Well, you need to stop lying. Maybe they'll trust you. The third thing, the third thing God says he hates, he hates hands that shed innocent blood. He hates hands that shed innocent blood. Well, Pastor, I ain't never killed anybody. I never took a gun and shot anybody. I never took a knife and cut anybody where you stab somebody in the back. You took that lying tongue and stabbed somebody in the back. Y'all don't want to help me this morning. He, he God also hates a heart that has a wicked imagination. See, 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 a wicked imagination is somebody who thinks about something wicked all of the time. And as long as you focus on wickedness all of the time, you'll create something that turns into a lie. Can, can I just be real for a second? That's why people get addicted to pornography. Because it's a wicked imagination that's not even true. 
But yet you try to make it true and try to act it out yourself. Y'all don't want to get delivered this morning. Y'all don't want to get set free this morning. We got to stop imagining stuff that God hates. Oh, I know. I know it's time to get out of here. I know it's convenient time. But 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 God hates feet that's quick to mischief. Real God hates feet. That are quick to run the mission. Right. Those are the ones that will care about the one right. 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 They hear some stuff, get in the gossip circle, uh -huh. bring the bone, leave it, and just see what happens. Right. Talk about, oh, here we go. Talk about the pastor. Uh -huh. Because they don't like the pastor. Uh -huh. Even though the pastor ain't done nothing to them, the pastor ain't kissing their behind. Look, I know I can't talk that loud today. But they'll take a bone just to tear the pastor or the deacon or the deaconess or the church member or the preacher down. Why? Because they got to get something on them. When they haven't done anything. But, 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 but here's the other one he hates. He hates false witnesses and those who stir discourse amongst the brethren. The stuff that God hates, the stuff that God hates is when God's church is moving along well and here you come with some foolishness. Amen. God is doing a mighty work in the body of Christ and here you are mad because then nobody put your name on the program. God is elevating the body of Christ that because somebody didn't see your grandma five years ago at the hospital, you still mad at the church. The things that God hates is the stuff that gets in the way of the church. We get ready to sit down. But if God saved your life, you don't have time to do stuff that he hates. If God saved your life, you don't have time to get involved in foolishness. If God saved your life, you don't have time to go lying on people in the church. If God saved your life, you don't have to kill people with lies in your gossip circle. If God saved your life, you can get that sin out of your heart. Good God Almighty. If God saved your life, you won't be so quick to run the foolishness outside of the church. Do I have anybody in the church this morning that says, I hate the things that God hates? I love the things that God loves. God loves my children forgive me. God loves somebody that will lift his name and pray. You have a witness this morning. But God hates those who don't love his people. Somebody say yes. Yes. Well. Well. I don't have time to put up with foolishness. When we get ready to take our seat, I'm so thankful that he made time a little extra for us this morning. All right. Yeah. So we can get up and get an extra hour of sleep. Yes. Good God Almighty. Yeah. But I'm so thankful that He made time to love us yeah. and hate yeah. the sin that we were in. Yeah. I'm so glad that He made time to yeah. come down 40 and two generations. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Yeah. To yeah. save my soul and yours. Yeah. I'm so glad yeah. that it took time to turn a little bit of water right. into some great big old wine. Right. I'm so glad that it took time that he saved 5,000 yeah. with two fish and five barley loaves. Good God Almighty. I'm so glad that it took time to give sight to a blind man that could not see himself. I'm so glad that it took time to heal a woman with an issue of blood. But I'm so glad that it took time to hang on the whole run of cross for your sins and mine. I'm so glad that it didn't say a mumbling word. I'm so glad that it took time on his business schedule to say forgive them for they know not what they do. I'm so glad that it took time that he hung his head and he died. I'm so glad that you laid in a bar too for your sins and mine. But early on Sunday morning, I'm so glad that it took time to get up out of hell. He took time to see about me. And he walked this earth one more time. Is there anybody here that's glad that it
they got them. Oh, yeah. There's something on it. Yeah. But all power, all power, all power. All power. All power. All power. Yes. It took time for me. Yes. It took yes. time for you. Yes. Somebody say thank you. Thank Somebody you. say thank, thank you. you. Somebody thank say thank you. 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 Thank you.